Well, ladies and gents, very good evening to all of you. The uh, live streams just start now, so uh, we are here in Sardinia, Al Cairo. And uh, shortly just going to be heading out. I haven't got the chat up, I just need to get the live chat so I can... Uh, Good evening, hello. So folks, this evening we're going to be flying from here in Algero to uh, Algero, however you pr want to pronounce it, um, in Sardinia to London Stansted. Then we're going to go from London Stansted to Cork. We're going to be pushing back in three minutes time. And uh, on our way, as I say, to London Stansted to start us off. So uh, good evening to all of you and uh, drop a comment in the chat and uh, a like would be very much appreciated. And uh, as I say, we'll be heading off in three minutes. Uh, pretty much streaming until midnight, yeah, uh, probably closer to um, 11 o'clock, half 11, really. But yeah, that's the idea. So I spent a bit of uh, time uh, preparing, so... Plane's all set up, we are ready to uh, go. Just got to close the doors, uh, close the air stairs, and uh, we'll be on our way very shortly. Right, you'll shut the door and close your stairs now. So, uh, contrary to the actual thumbnail for this video, I'm using the cable <laughs> and wireless livery, Echo India Charlie Sierra Charlie. Just, uh, I was playing about with a few things before with the National Express livery. Just the checklist that I wanted to see um, wasn't displaying properly uh, on the lower pedestal on the control column even, not the pedestal. Um, and it wasn't showing up properly so I switched it over to this so we're looking good again. Okay, we're going to go for push right, and yeah. start now. We're all set to go up here. We've been cleared to push and start at your discretion. Got a Wizz Air A321 landing here, uh, very shortly. Fueling. Okay, parking brake is off, clear to push. Brakes off, here we go. Well, the country was out of the 
Okay, start number one. Right, that's push and start complete. Hello, hello to everyone, good evening. Um, the flight this evening is going to be just over uh, two hours from here to Stansted, so just over two hours. And then our flight onwards to Cork will be around just over approximately an hour. Now then, made a, I've made a slight error. I should have pushed back to face the other way, so we're going to have to do a, a 180 turn, I think. Oh no, we can just taxi down and then go down the opposite taxi. Well, that's fine. Okay, taxi lights are on. Let's go. So we're departing runway uh, zero 02 this evening and uh, the route is fairly straightforward to be honest. It's straight out departure where we start heading north uh, right over mainland Europe and uh, pretty much continue that way until we get a standstill. So it's pretty straightforward. We're going to take an intersection departure this evening, we don't uh, require full length, so uh, we're going to take that intersection and just quickly go through the checklist. So config, checked, recall, checked, flight controls, checked, flaps 5, required, selected, checked, stabiliser trim, 5.0, checked, takeoff briefing, reviewed, cabin, secure. Got behind the line now. Go for behind the line, start switches, continuous, MCP, set, transponder, TRA, Arnie and strobe lights are on, checked. Retract on check for takeoff checklist is complete and we are clear for takeoff currently zero two. Ok, 
Jessica lining up runway 02 via Charlie. Okay, the approach is clear, left is clear. Okay, folks, here we go. Forty percent. Power set. Eighty knots checked. V one. V one. Rotate. V two. Positive rate. Gear up. Oh, flip the neck. There's a plane on approach. Gavin, hello. Good evening, mate. How are you? Right, well, that's very, very weird. For some reason, that aircraft's not only landing on the wrong runway, but uh, that did not show up on TCAS until we were airborne, until we were f it was about five. 500 feet, that was very near. Very, very weird. Heathrow, good evening, hello. Yes, uh, good thanks, yeah, good thanks. Uh, I'll show you the outside, yeah. As I said to everyone at the start of the stream, obviously for those of you who've just joined, you wouldn't have heard, but I'm not in the uh, National Express livery, we are in a different livery, just uh, due to a few er errors. Our delivery for today. Cable and wireless. So, those of you who were just watching will have noticed that we nearly had a collision with a Wizz Air A321. So, we didn't have anything on, I knew a, play, a Wizz Air was coming in, I didn't realise he was that close, but it wasn't just that. Uh, he was landing on runway 20, I'm just double checking to make sure, because the wind is currently 030 degrees 05 knots, which favours runway 02, and in real life, at Al Cairo, they are using... Find out. 
Is the PMDG uh, worth it? Yes, the PMDG is 100% worth it, definitely. very much, appreciate that, thank you. Um, let's see... I want to know what the active runway in use is. Yes, I was correct. The active runway in use is runway 02, so we were in the right. It was uh, coming to land, wasn't so that's a comfort. <laughs> Although, it's still unusual because I didn't get any TCAS alert until we were literally airborne, so it was quite close. Not to worry. We're in one piece, bit of avoiding action, and uh, we'll all live t to tell the tale. Right, uh, in the meantime, I forgot the after take off checklist, after take off, air conditioning, pressurization set, start switches, not required, they're off, uh, landing gear up and in the off position, auto brake is off, flaps up, no lights, altimeters set to start it. So the after take off checklist complete. Because of uh, we've got we've got about uh, seven point six tons of fuel aboard at the moment. We've got a, a fairly heavy uh, passenger number two, so we're going to climb up initially to thirty six thousand feet. Once we've burnt off enough fuel, then we'll step climb from thirty six to thirty eight thousand feet, and that'll be our final cruise level, uh, cruising altitude for this flight to uh, Stansted. So. That's the idea. If, you, if anyone has any questions, any queries or conversation, anything like that, drop a comment in the chat. It'd be good to hear from you. And also just for anyone wondering, our current estimated time of arrival is about uh, half past, actually no, it's, it's close at 25 minutes past uh, 9, that's UK time, so approximately 2 hours.
Yeah, the PMDG 737, it's definitely, I agree with you, it's one of the best. But uh, I think just in terms of detail, in terms of functionality, just everything, the whole package is, uh, is really quite something. But uh, yeah, if you have the money, definitely well worth investing. And I call it an investment because once you take the time to read about the systems, to understand it, then yeah, you really benefit yourself uh, and you learn a lot more about it. So it's a win-win. Oh, there, good To the north here we have the uh, island of Corsica, so we've uh, part of Sardinia obviously, um, but just to the north there is Corsica, uh, we'll be passing uh, Figari, Sud Corsa airport, which is just off to our right hand side, uh, heading to the north of Corsica, along to, uh, and then making a left hand turn as you can see in our route, heading more more to the north, which will take us around uh, near, in between Nice and Marseille, before we head over the Alps, uh, just west of the Alps anyway. See the airport of Figari just there, uh, down on our right hand side. It's on the island of Corsica. Very beautiful island, some really, really stunning scenery. It's definitely uh, one place if I ever had the opportunity to, I'd definitely uh, visit there. Let's just decide to have a texture issue momentarily. Sardinia and Corsica, every time I fly from um, Newcastle or uh, Manchester, typically the route takes you parallel to the island. So if it's a clear day, um, when I went to Malta in January, um, it was night time, so I, I didn't get a, a good view of the islands, but um, on the odd occasional flight, when it's been daytime, flying to Malta, uh, the view over the islands, just, when it's clear, it's just stunning. But uh, yeah, look nice, and uh, who knows, might end up visiting there one day.
uh, Corsair operates 747s, the approach to... Yes, it is. It is, that's right. Um, I've done that approach, mate, uh, a couple of times for... Uh... It was Ryanair, wasn't it? Who, who was it after the... Let's just, let's just double check, because I have done the approach... thinking of um, who have I flown with because it wasn't British Air anyway I've done the approach before but I know what you mean it's, it's a very very nice approach depending on which standard arrival you come in though you can get just pretty much a straight in but uh, that is, it is nice First, when I was at uh, Orly, I saw my first Air Corsicas, so that was uh, <coughs> that was quite nice back in um, in March. So yeah, oh, I've got to say this is going exceptionally well. We have we're only at thirty one thousand feet, so we've still got about six thousand eight hundred to go till we're at our cruise. Yet already we've got a very nice, healthy tailwind. Uh, 121 degrees, uh, 49 knots, and that is currently giving us a ground speed of 509. As we climb, I expect that to uh, increase further. So, uh, yeah, that, that's reduced, or will, in theory, reduce our overall time of arrival into Stansted, which will have a knock-on effect for our next flight to Cork, so yeah, we're looking very good. Hello, good evening. P18-3 panel must be closed prior to opening window. Press the trigger and pull to open the window. Although there should be another thing saying do not try this at 37,000 feet. Or maybe that's a common sense thing. I don't know. Is Vatsim better than FSX? If if you don't have FSX, you can't get on Vatsim. <laughs> Vatsim is a network, so without FSX, you might as well not join Vatsim. If you want to know what Vatsim is, if you want to know what's involved and the kind of network it is, look in the description. There's a link there to the website uh, at which you can view what's going on and so on how to join and all sorts of fun things to do. Yeah that's that's right, yeah. Because where it where it actually is, as you say mate, even if you look at the turning circle for runway uh, two zero I think it is, on the opposite side it's a very tight turn in and because of the terrain you have it uh, causes some interest in the uh, uh, turbulence in that on that approach, but it's um, yeah, it's it's very interesting. There are some really exceptionally uh, good airports to fly in and out of in uh, in Europe, but that's why I don't see the need to look farther afield because you know <laughs> some some nice ones 
on our own doorstep, you could say. And hello to everyone who's just joined us on the uh, chat. Good evening to you all. So we're just about to uh, reach 36,000 feet, at which we'll level off temporarily. And once we've burned off enough fuel, then we shall uh, step climb up to 38,000 feet. So that's the plan. What's the difference? Well, as I've just quite clearly stated, flight FSX is a flight simulator, and VATSIM is a network. And you can't fly on the network without the use of a flight simulator, be it FSX, P3D, X-Plane, you know, whatever. Um, flight Simulator 2004, if you're desperate. Without those, you can't fly on the network. So it's no different to having a racing car game, and you can race all day by yourself, but you join a network where there are other people driving or playing live and you join in to that network or that group of a multiplayer. Net Vatsim's exactly the same. Difference being on Vatsim there are a lot well quite high standards um, which have to be met. And yeah. If you don't understand what a network is then I, I suggest uh, I suggest you uh, <laughs> Google it. Just looking on flight radar and just watching their course gray 320 uh, land there. Very interesting. The shortest flight, well, the shortest flight we're doing this evening will be the Stansted to Cork sector. So that shall be approximately one hour. But if you're on about overall shortest flight, then the overall shortest flight I've ever done was Col Colonse to... Oh, where was it? It was the Scottish one. Yes, another stream. Hello, good evening and welcome back. This is a little bit of a longer one, as I've said, to London Stansted. And we're just about to pass the French coast here and uh, head up north through France. We have Marseille on our left and uh, let's see, yes we have Marseille and Nice both on our left hand side. So making fairly good progress as stated 54 knot tailwind and nice and steady at 36,000 feet at the moment and for some unusual reason we aren't uh, It's not giving us a point to step up to 38,000 feet. It's telling us that it's unable, we're unable to. Um, in which case, we are going to stick at 36,000 feet at the moment. We 
we're coming from the island of Sardinia uh, from Alcero and uh, yeah that's where we're coming from basically and uh, on our way to, to Stansted Right, very good. Thanks. Yeah, that's a shame. I, it was the same, really, for myself until I decided to invest in a new PC. And upon doing so, the frame rates were better, the performance was better, and now it even allows me to live stream my flights with yourselves. So overall, it was a worthwhile investment I would say and um, yeah thoroughly enjoy it and uh, I know sometimes you know the cruise part may uh, not interest some people as much which is fair enough there's not a lot happening but uh, overall we've flown to some interesting uh, places and seen some interesting things such as me crashing a Air Greenland Dash 7 if any of you don't know what I mean, uh, have a look at my YouTube videos in which you'll see I accidentally crashed a plane. Something I shouldn't be proud of, but given the fact I was looking for my friend, I'm quite proud of it. So, yeah, it was a worthy cause. Just quickly need to adjust our cruising altitude in the Ryanair client. One second. down to uh, system system wise unfortunately so yeah that's the way it goes okay folks I haven't eaten for quite a few hours so I'm going to go and make a sandwich I'm not entirely sure what kind yet but we'll see what's in the fridge and uh, come up with something to eat an in-flight snack an in-flight meal call it whatever you want what's the most difficult landing you ever made um, well, most difficult. Um, da, 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 let me think about that. Um, probably landing um, at Gatwick. Um, it was. Hmm, it was a few years ago. But I was landing at Gatwick, the winds were gusting at about 49, 50, and yeah, it just wasn't a nice approach. So, <laughs> Innsbruck, yeah, Innsbruck was <laughs> challenging, but all of the times I flew to Innsbruck, it was either nice and calm, it was a straight in approach, so I never got the fun, fun approach from the other side where you've got to fly in between the hills. Um, so, yeah, Innsbruck was always fairly simple when I used to fly with British Airways. So, yeah, maybe I was spoiled. I don't know. But no, Gatwick was that was a challenging approach, and that was quite a while ago. But in the end, I went around. I think it was two, two, three times, and then after that, diverted to uh, Heathrow. And then refueled at Heathrow and flew back to Gatwick. So that was in the days when I flew with British Airways. And that was in a Wilco 737-400 as well. And at the time, my PC was really... If it had a bad day, it would crash. And if it had a good day, it would fly for more than four hours. And on that particular day, it flew for many, many more than... <laughs> much more even <laughs> than four hours and uh, yeah it was it was great fun really really good fun so anyway folks I'm gonna go and make a sandwich I shall be right back so 
I'll speak to you shortly.
Hello everyone, I am back. I'm just, uh, I just had a very nice sandwich and I'm going to go downstairs in just a moment to get myself a cup of tea. So, hello. I'll just quickly have a look through the uh, chat, see how we're all doing. Let's see. Uh, Rex add-ons. No, there's... Pardon me. Uh, there's no Rex add-ons. Um, the simulated cloud and the way it's depicted and so on, that's um, via Opus, Opus Weather. So that's the weather engine I'm using. Evening Michael, how are you doing mate? Good of you to join. I, I saw your comments on the video before, don't, don't worry. I, I was doing a second stream, but uh, it was good of you to comment on them, mate. Thank you very much. Uh, let's have a look. Thank you very much for subscribing. Very, very kind of you. And if, and, uh, if anyone else as well, really appreciate it. All the support. Thank you all. No, I didn't leave the cockpit for a cup of tea. No, 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 you're mistaken. I did not leave the cup leave the cup of tea. I did not leave the cockpit for a cup of tea. I've yet to do so. I left the cockpit to make myself an egg and cheese sandwich. But I've yet to go downstairs to have my cup of tea. Now as any English person knows, any English person that makes a good cup of tea, the standard procedure is Put your tea bags in the teapot, you pour the hot water thereafter, and you leave your pot of tea to brew for five minutes. Now currently it has been five minutes and thirty seconds, so I am already late in pouring my cup of tea. So anyway, that's another discussion for another day. <laughs> right folks, I am going to just pop downstairs, get a cup of tea. And I shall be back in a couple of moments, and I'll leave you all in the capable hands of our moderator this evening, Michael Larkin, who's online. So I shall be right back. Uh, when are we going to land? We are going to land in one hour and eight minutes. So not long to go. One hour, eight minutes. Yes, yes, not 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 just egg and cheese, oh Michael, not just egg and cheese. So you first of all you start off seeded bread, lovely. Brown seeded bread, butter, lovely. Start with the base, a little bit of mayonnaise just over the top. Diced lettuce, that's next. Um, then after that, you put your cheese on top of the lettuce. Tiny bit of barbecue sauce over the top of the cheese. Then fry just lightly some cut tomatoes. Cut the tomatoes, fry them just for a couple of minutes. Put the tomatoes on top of the cheese, then your cheese starts to melt down onto the lettuce and then just just uh, just an egg quickly fry one single egg and place that nicely on top of the tomatoes Bob's your uncle and there is my that's my simple egg and cheese sandwich anyway so yeah good fun you're a Brit and you love coffee oh dear me I, I like coffee as well but it's the wrong time of day it's it's eight o'clock I'd like to get to um, to sleep tonight so yes Right, I am going to get a cup of tea, so I shall bear it back, folks.
Okie dokie folks, I am back. How to set up a flight, it's very simple. You press the on button and you push the throttle forward and you go. There you go, that's how you set up a flight. I shall walk you through it, Michael. I never agree to this. <laughs> Actually, if, if um, well, no. If if you want, I mean, it depends. Are you are you referring to setting up the FMC or or what? I presume that's what you're on about. Because if so, then just stay tuned for our next flight. Yeah, exactly. Uh, just watch the next flight. Um, I mean, obviously. I use a company route, so I don't actually program the route part of our flight itself into the FMS. I select a pre-programmed route, which automatically enters the waypoints, the airways, and so on into um, into the FMC. So I do that. Um, but what what you can see is you can see the basic setup and so on and how how it works. So yeah, if you uh, if you stick around for about another hour, one hour and thirty minutes, so about an hour and a half, um, that's when we'll be doing our flight to Cork next. So stick around till then, and uh, who knows, you may learn something. Let me show you all the outside view. Very keen enthusiast. Uninstalling your flight sim and reinstalling it, it can work, but um, it, it, as I say, it depends on your system. Are you running it on a computer? Um, 
or a laptop, are you, on, a, on a desktop or a laptop. What, what are you, what are you running it on? What are your specifications, um, and so on. So, you know, it all it all really depends on uh, what it's running, really. Yep, Michael, you beat me to that one. <laughs> no, that, that that still isn't... No, we're not flying to Cork, we're flying to Stansted at the moment. There afterwards we are going to Cork, so, yeah. No, no, I, I know what you're saying about where you're installing it, but that still doesn't alter the fact. If you're running it on a laptop, doesn't matter what the spec, it's gonna be bad. It really is. Don't ask why, it just is. So, yeah. On the other hand, if you're running a decent computer with um, good specifications, then yeah. You have to, yeah, especially if you're getting an error message. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think you are either, unless unless you can say in the chat, right, I'm running a 64-bit computer on a desktop, Windows 10, um, 3.2 gigahertz, quad-core processor, 24 gig of RAM. Unless you can categorically say that, then your system your system could be one gig of RAM or not even 500 meg of RAM as far as I'm concerned so you know your system spec has a lot to play with how FSX works so unless the two go hand in hand together it's never going to be a perfect marriage anyway so yeah I Michael with the clean uninstall as you say <laughs> I once tried that on my old PC and I had error after error after error and um, <laughs> in the end I had to wipe Windows 10 off my computer to do a fresh reinstall because I tried deleting the registry ones and I deleted the proper ones but it still hadn't, it still left parts of the uh, installation lying on the hard drive so yeah it was a it was a nightmare to say the least.
even if it's a gaming laptop. And, uh, historically, FSX has never worked well on laptops. It's just, it's just a fact. Don't ask why. It's just, <laughs> it's funny. But uh, yeah, I would advise getting a, a, a desktop um, with some good specs. And again, if it, even if it's a gaming laptop, unless you know the specs, it just rings alarm bells to me. And you know, quite frankly, that's probably why FSX is, is running so bad. So yeah, that's just from experience. So yeah. Exactly as um, exactly as Michael says, the cash you spend means nothing. The specs are error. You could spend a million pounds and still have a 500 megabyte, a 0.25 gigahertz processor, and it would still run absolutely poorly. So unless you have top of the range specs with top of the range, you know, compute, it's never going to be, it's never going to run properly. Quite frankly, so. Yeah, that's just a fact of life. Just getting some ILS information for our arrival into Stansted. We'll be landing in um, 47 minutes, so we aren't far away at all. Let's get the latest information. Runway news, runway 22. Temperatures 22. No cloud. QNH 1016. Information Oscar. Visibility 10 kilometers or more. Wind is varying between 120 and 190. Other than that, looking good. Now we'll just put some uh, ILS information in. Air the outer view. what we look like from ground level. Easy jet. No, definitely not. Definitely not. Okay, so the runway course heading at Stansted is 223 degrees, ILS is 110.50. Barquay VOR, that's 116.25. Pop that in. Transition altitude 6,000 feet, category C, cap 1, 
and the runway elevation, the threshold elevation is 350. Uh, set up for uh, landing at uh, Stansted now. We do have a little bit of ATC on as well. Thanks very much, Gavin. Thanks, mate. Yep. Uh, let's see. Category C transition. Um, for us, the arrival we're taking, Gavin, takes us from the south. Um, we don't have a transition as such. We have a standard arrival, which uh, takes us so far, and uh, so the arrival we are on today is going to be the Laurel for Quebec arrival. That takes us um, pretty much directly over around about Heathrow area and then up towards Stansted thereafter. So uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's the idea anyway. Coffee. <laughs> Coffee. Hello, good evening, yeah. But now it should be a straight in arrival for runway uh, 22 in the Stansted, so it should be straightforward. Uh, descending over the Heathrow arrivals and departures and so on. We'll be starting our descent in 15 minutes. I use a SciTech X35 and X36 uh, joystick and throttle quadrant.
Yeah, of course, I'd slammed it. Oh, very nice indeed. Yes, we do have some ATC online, so we do have um, Issa Carrera and Stans Vettel. I'll beat you to that one, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're, you're right there, Gavin. You're right there. Man. Quiet bank holiday Monday. And I got my car sorted yesterday. Got a nice full week of work ahead. Nice walk with the family this afternoon. A cup of tea in hand. A little bit of flying on bats and, and reading some of your guys' comments. Well, all of your comments, you know. And uh, yeah, couldn't be better.
what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> the engines could flame out, the navigation display could go off, ATC might tell us the airport's closed. Hello from Ireland, good evening, top of the morning or top of the evening to you. Um, given the fact we're going to Cork, that was a very bad expression, but anyway. Um, what else could go wrong? There could be an eclipse. So we go from VMC conditions to IMC conditions. Vis visual meteorological conditions to instrument meteorological conditions. So, yeah. Um, let's see just trying to think um, it's not much else could go wrong flight sim could crash um, ATC could be a pain yeah not much really We have everyone. <laughs> we have so we have Poland, France, Ireland. So in that case, it, it, right. So I've done top of the morning to you. So that's my Irish greeting. Um, so Polish, dobry wieczór. Uh, French, uh, bonsoir. Um, English, good evening, folks. Um, Jordy, yeah, all right. Scottish, evening, lad. Um, Welsh. Hello! And any other ones? I think we've covered pretty much all the accents, haven't we? Yeah, I think we've, we, we've covered it pretty much. Yeah, I think that'll do. Uh, Greek. Don't ask me the Greek one. I don't know. Yeah, we'll be landing in 30, well not even 30 minutes, we'll be landing in uh, 20, 24 minutes, so yeah. It, as Michael Larkin says folks, if you didn't already like it and subscribe, please do. It's a pretty cool stream. The stream is, it's just the person who talks is a bit of a pain. That's what you'll gradually learn. But, uh, hey you go. By which I was referring to myself, just to clarify that, not Michael, me. <laughs> right, so we're just descending into uh, Stansted now. <laughs> yeah, it's not too long, it's not, not too long at all. So 
So what I'm doing on my laptop at the moment is planning our next flight to Cork. So I'm just getting all the information that's uh, needed. Ah, very nice indeed, very nice. Is that on uh, VATSIM? Yes, Yarek. Yarek, I think it is. I think I see you on, on Vatspy, mate. Uh, call sign Echo November Yankee 101 from John F. Kennedy from uh, Nova York. So, uh, fantastic. Have a good flight. We are just descending, as I say, to uh, London Stansted. There's the White Cliffs of Dover just below us there. the south coast of England. So we're just keeping a very uh, high descent rate at the moment. Uh, we're a little bit high so we're just going to have to accelerate a bit more. Evening, mate. You have to excuse me there. <coughs> I got something stuck in my throat. <laughs> yeah, good evening. How are you doing? And we've got 41 people watching. Goodness me. Good evening, everyone. Good of you all to join. Uh, what sky textures? The textures are by Opus. So the Opus weather engine I use, that's what they're provided by. Talking of which, I need to do a weather update. So you might see the stream just... Uh, quiet momentarily. So just a quick weather update. So the wind will probably change round now to a nice headwind. Yeah, that's what it's done. Okay, so that's our weather updated. Right here, we're good. <laughs> Need some water. I've just drank. You know, those of you here will know the sports um, sports direct cups, the big, large mugs you can get. Well, I've just had two full ones of those of a cup of tea. So yeah, I'm I'm doing good. <laughs> just need more fluids. Yeah, basically, if you were listening, I would have you, you would have understood. But I just said I was doing weather updates. So because of the weather updates, the wind changes from a tailwind to a headwind. Then uh, obviously the plane has to catch up because the speed has suddenly gone from being perfect to having a headwind. Therefore, you're over speeding uh, the aircraft's limits. So that's that that that's the way. That's why.
Yeah, I can. Um, I, I speak Polish fluently, uh, Jarek. So, dobry wieczór, jak się miasz, co robić? Uh, w tym momencie jestem w samolot, idziemy do Londonie i, i tak. Dziękuję, dziękujemy też, dziękuję. So, yep, I learned, I learned Polish for uh, several years and, uh, yeah, still, still occasionally uh, use it when I get the opportunity. So, thank you very much. Dziękuję. <laughs> The ATC is still on. We've got Essex radar, but uh, I'm not sure how much longer he's going to stay online. So we'll, we'll just have to see. Um, just planning our Cork flight, and it looks like it's going to be one hour and ten minutes. So it should be uh, fairly straightforward. Yes, Kevin. I, as, I, as I said, it was a case of um, Polish or French, but to be honest, I never use French. So, whereas we have a, or we had a very good Polish community here. So, uh, and I have friends in Poland, in the in the east side. So, um, who I visit occasionally, and uh, yeah, to me, it, it was just worth learning the language, and I ha also have a bit of. Uh, a few connections over there, so yeah, it's it's good. So if you look straight ahead of you, that's uh, London Heathrow Airport. Straight ahead. How can you do so? The cockpit's black. The cockpit's perfectly fine. The right side is darkened because we don't need that information uh, available. So as far as I'm concerned, the primary flight display, navigation display, and the engine. Uh, monitoring on this side is all we need. So, yeah. That's Heathrow just up ahead there. Texture is made dark and it's due to uh, having blue. Okay, we're all good. It's a very, very nice sky, that. Very nice indeed.
Right, time to put the seatbelt signs on, just passing about uh, 10,000 uh, feet, so we'll go for our descent check there. Pressurization, landing altitude set, 350, anti-ice not required, approach briefing and fuel. Discussed, instrument airspeed and altitude books. Checked and I just need the Q&H actually. What's uh, Q&H? Q&H 1016, so descent checklist complete. Okay, for some reason uh, Essex Radar still isn't contacting us, so... I've got traffic on our left hand side. Just climbing out of uh, Heathrow there. Ah, oh, hello Guernsey. Hello, good, good of you to join. Uh, no, we're just landing in Stansted now. Um, they are a sign of a front approaching, but yeah. Oh, here we go. Essex Radar, good evening, Ryanair 2, 1 X-ray November, level flight level uh, 80. Yeah, Essex Radar, hello, inspecting for the ILS approach runway 22, that's the central control aircraft type. Inspect ILS approach runway 22, and as always, we are a 737 Ryanair 2, 1 X-ray November. I don't know, thank you, Barclay heading 070 degrees. Parkway heading 070 degrees, right now 2 on X ray about that. Two one extra miles from two descends to altitude six thousand feet, two one zero one six. Ten to six thousand feet and one zero one six, right now two one, X ray November.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, One three zero degrees down two thousand feet. One three zero degrees down two thousand feet. Two nine zero degrees, clear to our last two two right now, two one next right now. Two two, clear to land. Thanks, Ryanair. Right two one, extra in November.
VK at 2 2, right now 2 1, X Ray Hub. Two one, left Juliet. Saying left Juliet, two one, next ray number. Right, right, continue taxi, right, Juliet, right, on to Charlie, stand 5-1. Yeah, Juliet and Charlie, stand 5-1, thank you very much, right, 2-1, X-ray, the number. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to London Stansted. Cabin crew, disarm doors for arrival please and cross check, thank you. So, that's us down in Stansted, next flight is to Cork. So we'll do a quick turn around and get underway to uh, Cork. So we'll just do all that, thank you all very much for your comments, I have liked uh, reading them. Let's let our passengers out. We're 10 minutes early, so... Initially our arrival should have been 25 minutes past uh, 9, so we are nice and ahead of schedule. 
Right, I'll just file this flight plan and uh, we'll get our next load. Oh, we've got a very light load going to Cork. Okay, call sign is Ryanair 62 X ray Golf. So that's our that's our call sign. Let's get the fuel in. So fuel for this flight. Five tons. Payload fifty-seven point seven. So that's gross weight sixty-two point six. Okay, let's start the Ryanair tracker. Cruising altitude thirty-four thousand feet. Uh, depart pushback time twenty-one twenty-eight. Reconnect to that same with our new call sign. getting mighty dark now so let's get the lights on and let's get set up for um, you joined when we were starting to land ah oh, very good very good well if you're joining now we're doing our last flight now which is to Cork in Ireland so that's where we're going next well the only thing that's going to happen is we're going to take off and land so <laughs> right we're <coughs> just going to get set up Part and runway two two Nugbo one Romeo departure. Make sure this all um, you love flying, excellent, very good. So do most of us, I think. So Mike one eight three Compton, O nine Kennet, Un fourteen Pemob, Un thirty Banba, uh, then direct to Vapal, and then the arrival. Oh, the weather looks nice. Vis <laughs> Visibility in Cork, 3,000 metres. Few cloud at 700 feet, broken at 900 feet. The visibility looks horrible in Cork. <laughs> oh dear. 330, so we'll go ILS 35. And Vapal. Vapal 1 Golf Rival. Uh, 626 fuel 5.1 reserves 1 cost index 6 flight level 340 we may go higher uh, 6,000 feet surface wind surface wind the wind up there 246022 Four zero zero seven. Okay. So approximately one hour, two minutes flight time. <laughs> the sounds, the sounds, uh, that's the Ryanair. 
virtual management system that we use to track our flights and with that comes some add-on sounds which make it sound more realistic so yeah it is normal for cork michael you're right you know what i've got a funny story but the, f the very first land at bristol <laughs> yeah i think i'll do that um of all the airports in the world my very first flight for a virtual airline was about seven eight years ago and i flew from i flew from newcastle to cork and i approached cork in an airbus a320 and i crashed um i didn't have a clue about you know anything aviation wise and uh, yeah and the airline got rid of me so after that I thought I'd better pull up the uh, sleeves and learn how to fly the thing. <laughs> Quick cup uh, and a biscuit, that sounds like a plan. I think I'm going to do the same. Cup of tea and a few malted milk biscuits, that'll do me. Uh, right, initial climb 4,000. Okay, cruise is 34,000 feet. Seatbelt signs can go on. Uh, right, okay folks, we are pretty much all set up, ready to rock and roll, so... So I am just going to go and get a cup of tea and a drink, a cup of tea is a drink, um, <laughs> so I'm going to go and do that and I will be right back in about 5 minutes. Pushback time is in 14 minutes time, in 14 minutes, so we'll push back then. Yeah it doesn't help that it's on a hill, you're right, you're right there. Right you, I'll leave you with that view and I'm going to go and get a drink folks, so I shall be right back.
Okie dokie folks, so I am back. Hello, hello. What's happened? Not very much, not very much. Let's have a look. Um Yeah, nice view of the apron, yeah. <laughs> right, let's have a look. We've got uh, three... Da -da -da. Um, so, we've got uh, three more minutes to go till uh, push and start. Just going to get... Uh, start getting ready. So ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening <coughs> and welcome on board this Ryanair flight from London Stansted to Cork. Our flight time this evening is approximately 1 hour and 5 minutes. So we're going to be cruising at an altitude of 34,000 feet. Myself as Captain Jonathan Winton and your First Officer, Joe McGregor, would like to welcome you on board this flight. We ask that you pay close attention to the safety briefing by our cabin crew, whether you're a regular flyer or not. Once again, we thank you for choosing Ryanair, and we wish you a pleasant flight. So, but, uh, one more minute till uh, push back. So let's close the door and get the air stairs up. Double check we don't have any ATC and we'll get underway. So, any ATC on? Nope, we're all good. Yeah, 28, we'll initiate pushback. And uh, ground, cockpit. Any collision lights can come on. We're all set to go up here. We've been cleared to push and start at your discretion. Pardon me, ready for push. Power and air are clear, doors closed. We are ready for pushback. Please, parking brake, please. Okay, parking brake is off, clear to push. Brakes off, here we go. Okie doke, so we're going to do engine start sequence 2 to 1, start number 2. Got a company right now, just on our left there. Air fuel's going in. And start number one.
you were there. Farm break set. Right, okay, that's the engines done. Let's go, folks. Config checked. Recall checked. Flight controls checked. Flaps five. Quiet. Select. Green light checked. Stabilizer trim 4.9 is required. That's checked. Takeoff briefing reviewed. Cabin secured. Behind the line. behind the line now start switches continuous MCP set transponder TARA checked landing and strobe lights are on retracts are on takeoff checklist complete cliff takeoff runway 22 left is clear checked right is clear checked Grow seats for departure. Clocks. Here we go. Two again. Eighty knots checked. Positive climb, gear up. Ok, 
Okay, fine, uh, 10,000. Yep, the engine's kicked in. <laughs> Always a very, very nice sound indeed. And there's no ATC on currently, so we're taking a little bit of a shortcut. Just for the fact there isn't any ATC on. Um, usually we'd follow the full SID, but usually if there's low traffic, and there is sometimes ATC on, we'll give you a shortcut, but at the moment we're all fine. We're climbing very nicely, so we're going to take a nice shortcut. We throw hello, good evening. Right, so, I'm getting a direct to... Oops. Straight up to 34,000 feet. Usually I don't do many shortcuts, um, but when I check that spy to see what other aircraft are in or around uh, London, if there are few and if there's no ATC, then I'll just take a a shortcut to um, basically shorten the, shorten the journey really. It's, uh, as I say the SIDs are in place and the routings are in place four times when you have a lot of traffic but in general if you can get a shortcut you take it. So. That's us passing 10,000. That's off, passing seatbelt. After takeoff checklist. So air conditioning pressurization set. Start switches are off. Landing gear up and off. Auto brake off. Checked. Flaps up. No lights checked. And altimeter set to standard. After takeoff checklist is complete. How to get black screen with white background? No idea. No idea, I'm afraid. I was just thinking that black screen on white background seems very unusual. So we've got 320 miles to go and we'll be landing in 52 minutes. Do you not mean the centre, the upper engine display where it shows the ear flaps and so on? Not too ship.
And so I'm just looking at the weather in Cork at the moment. Um, so when I last checked, the visibility was a few clouds at 300, uh, 700 feet. Uh, since then I've checked and we're now down to broken clouds at 300 feet. Visibility is 3000 meters, so it should be enough for us to get in. Uh, light drizzle. Um, so we've got 330 degrees, 13 knots visibility, 3000 meters drizzle, a few clouds at 300 feet broken at 500 feet, broken at 1,200 feet, temperatures 14, dew point 13, QNH 1016, uh, but it is becoming visibility of 10 miles uh, broken at 1,700 feet. Uh, so the actual forecast is for the weather to improve, but as of now the weather still isn't that great. Stop your pollution. <laughs> oh, you mean the FMS? have to switch uh, runway potentially. I'm just looking at the ILS chart for Cork. The minimum altitude we can go to our decision height is 633 which is approximately just about 100 above what we need. On the other side of the runway, on runway 17, we can go down to 559, which is closer to what we need. Visual landing. In uh, 3,000 meters, I don't think so. <laughs> what does ILS? Wow, goodness me! A, 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 a question. Instrument landing system. So it basically directs us down to the ground in a safe uh, way down to the runway and uh, yeah it helps in low visibility we have different categories we have category 1 category 2 category 3 category 3 is the highest category of uh, ILS you can have obviously with the microwave landing system the change and changing it to actually lower how far down you can go to actually land till when you see the runway but, uh, for example, the, the airport we're landing at, the runway 35, that only has category 1 ILS, which uh, means the height at which we decide to go around or land is higher than, say, a category 3. A category 3, we can go a lot lower, closer to the ground in low visibility, until we decide to go around or continue with the approach. So, yeah. Loads of different categories. Uh, chasing the sun. <laughs> well, we'd need some afterburners to get chasing the sun. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Although, thankfully, Michael, I was just looking at the weather, and, and as I've just said, it is looking as though it's improving. So, you know, 
fingers crossed but uh, we should uh, should be in, uh, have improved quite a bit by the by the time I'm just watching the real life Stansted to Cork Ryanair flight land at the moment. So they're just about to make an attempt to land on runway 35 at Cork, so I want to see how they get on, but it should be alright. Where are we flying? We're flying to Cork. Yeah, see you later on. Thank you very much for joining. Take care. Well, that's us just uh, reaching our cruise of uh, of thirty four thousand feet. Well, we'll be landing in 40 minutes, so not long to go now.
Yeah, not long. Yeah, not long. Are you going over Strumbo? Uh, I think so. Uh, oh, actually, this. I'll just check. Because, um, yeah, this actually just takes us uh, along from there. Uh, pretty much straight across to Ireland, so yeah, it's not too bad. Sorry folks, I'm, I'm not ignoring you, I'm just um, filming a couple of um, bits on YouTube, I'm just sorting these bits out. Some, uh, some, user <laughs> some user commented on one of my videos the other week saying, please can I use your footage in, in, in a news thing I'm doing? I never replied to it, because I've only looked at the comments today, clicked on their channel, and lo and behold, they've used my footage without permission. So they've stolen my footage, basically, without allowing for a response. So, it's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. YouTube, hello mate, how are you doing? Yeah, some yeah, it was um, <laughs> so someone stole some from my one of my Manchester videos, and um, you know, give them the due. They did ask. 
they commented on a video a week ago saying please can I use this footage rather than wait and say me say well no sorry you can't or yes you can they've just gone ahead and used it it's like sorry that's that's not on so um, I've uh, had to report it to YouTube but hey -ho. thank you very much for subscribing mate much appreciated yeah and uh, well I'm looking forward to getting back into plane spotting again sh uh, soon just need to get the last few parts for my car tomorrow and then we'll be good to go. No, it's not a fake channel either, mate. It's um, got a couple hundred subscribers. Not major. It isn't a major channel. But um, no, they never even credited it. Never credited at all. I uh, clicked on the video, watched it, saw my footage. Uh, no credit, no nothing. So, uh, yeah. It's absolutely ridiculous. It is annoying. I think as much as anything, it's all the hassle. You've got to go and report it and provide your view and everything. It's crazy. New career, no. After uh, last week's accident, last uh, s not not yesterday, a week past Sunday, where I went to overtake a tractor and a Polish uh, van driver slammed into us because he never checked his mirrors. Um, accident was not my fault. And uh, he openly admitted that and uh, tried contacting him, no contact. Um, thankfully the damage to my car was repairable. Uh, so I needed a new front wing, two new doors and uh, did all that and uh, over the weekend tried to get it sorted but uh, thankfully where the, the rear uh, metal plate where the uh, number plates on in the on the van, it literally just slammed along the side of the window, uh, buckled the door, and buckled the wing. But it hadn't damaged the bonnet. It hadn't damaged the bumper. So um, yeah. So it was. Um, it was quite a pain to say the least, especially when, you know, I got all his contact details, insurance details, and in the end, because I'm a young driver, uh, with two years no claims insurance, it's kind of, you know, <laughs> you, it's at the point where you think, uh, it's, uh, it's ridiculous, if you're a young driver, and uh, you're driving, properly you get penalized on the other hand if you're a driver at fault as he was and openly admitted in front of seven people then you get away scot-free can drive back to a and uh, yeah crazy crazy system ah good evening mate how are you doing how's your trip and everything gone Well, what I do have the I do actually have a copyright. It's in the bottom right-hand corner. It's uh, a copyright overlay, so it's in all my videos anyway. So yeah, 19 Bootsy 68. I got the um, and Mau Mau. Hello, good evening, mate. I got those. Um, I picked them up from the Hilton. The uh, amenity kits. Thank you very much for those. Um, 
I really do appreciate that. It was uh, interesting just, you know, the design and, and so on of some on some of them and uh, what they included. Very, very interesting. But uh, thank you very much for that. So we're going to be descending in 8 minutes time. I'm going to start getting some ILS info ready. No, I really appreciate it mate, it was very, very kind of you. When I went, um, I parked at the Shell garage and uh, walked walked along and uh, the, last at the last at the reception and I says, oh there's a, there's a yellow bag being handed and uh, she, she came along with it so yeah, it was very nice. There's not much to see outside. That's our livery, cable and wireless. Flight radar, both Ryanair flights landed with no issues, so we should be good. Course heading 345, uh, aerodrome elevation, threshold elevation 535460. Minimums are 633. Yes, I, I looked. I must admit, walking out of the Hilton carrying this yellow bag, it was quite, um, yeah, got a few interesting looks. <laughs> but no, it was it was good, man. It was good. Man. Thank you very much. I like the Finnair one. That was my favourite. <laughs> I've still got. Um, oh man, I used to collect. Um, when we used to fly with Air Malta from Newcastle, um, this was sort of 2006, 2005. They always used to give you like a, a set, a knife, a fork, uh, you know, some salts and, and all sorts. And, uh, I just used to try and keep them. <laughs> and I've still got the, my uh, tray mat and uh, boarding card and everything else. Uh, safety card as well. I got off there. Uh, one of the A319s, but uh, yeah, always fun collecting stuff though, always fun. Yeah, the red of the plane, Echo India Charlie Sierra Charlie, correct. You can see in our plate here on the uh, in our registration plate, Echo India, Charlie Sierra Charlie, and Cellcal non applicable, so we don't need one. Oh, the Jumbolino one, thank you very much, mate. Yeah, that was. Um, I was just going through some footage from a few years ago on, on the hard drive and uh, it wasn't the best footage because bearing in mind three years ago the tripod I had was not top notch but um, yeah it was, it was just such a nice plane you know it was, uh, what, 
do a little video of it. But thank you very much for for watching it. I appreciate that. Right, transition altitude, 5,000 feet, 135 miles to go, 28 miles till top of descent. And this is our last flight. In case any of you, anyone is wondering, landing in 23 minutes, and that's us done for tonight. Bank holiday Monday. And then back to uh, back to work tomorrow. Good fun. Okay, Q and H is one zero one six in Cork. Right, we'll just make sure we've got the frequencies and everything all set. So we've got one zero nine one five. One zero nine decimal one five, Cork VOR one one four decimal six. We are 113 DME out. Yeah, it used to be with Ryanair. That's correct, mate. Um, it's an old, it's an old one from Ryanair, and that used to have this livery on. But uh, yep, as you say, it's uh, long gone now. Okay, that's us all set up for our arrival. And we have, can you believe it, we're going to have ATC when we land in Cork. So that's going to be interesting. Expect ILS approaching with 3.5, da 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 da. So we've got Cork ATC on, we've got Cork approach, 119.9. Okay, so we're just about to initiate our descent. Descent checklist. Pressurization landing altitude is set, and that's at 450 feet. Anti-ice, not required. Approach briefing, landing runway 35, ILS approach straight in. And uh, fuel, yep, yeah. oh fine. Checked. Discussed. Instrument airspeed and altitude bugs uh, set, and we have a VREF of 135 flaps 40. Uh, descent checklist is complete. Yeah, ATC in Cork, yes, I know. It's, uh, what do you mean it's, what do you mean it's 10 past? 10, 11 minutes past 10 here in Ireland. It's 11 minutes past 10 here in England as well, man. <laughs> you, you know what the difference is? It's not a lot. <laughs> really, some people have some funny, funny, funny ideas in this country. Like, I've taken some friends over to Dublin for the first time, and um, it's like, oh my goodness, they drive on the left side of the road. It's like, well, yes, they drive on the same side as us, you know. Oh, and there's not now as difference. No, it's like ten minutes from one side to the other, you know, in terms of where the sun is. So why should there be an hour's difference, you know? Oh, some people have some funny ideas about our tail. <laughs> ATC, land where you want. <laughs> it's often the way.
Well, the visibility in Cork is definitely improving. A few clouds now at 400 feet, broken at 600, so the uh, visibility is definitely improving now. Yes, I'm still on there. I'm still on. So currently there is some traffic uh, also landing in Cork. There's a Ryanair positioning from Cork, from Dublin to Cork, and then there's a 757 uh, behind him going to Cork as well. So um, yeah, might get uh, a little bit uh, busy on the approach. So, which is good. So folks, once uh, ATC uh, asks me to contact him, then I won't be speaking to you till uh, we arrive on stand. And uh, that's just standard protocol. Concentration at its highest and you have to be alert to every instruction that uh, it's given. Yes, you can indeed, mate. Yes, yeah, send us it. I'll, uh, I'll respond, yeah. Uh, have you been watching the EasyJet thing on ITV? Yes, I have. And I don't know if you noticed, mate, I had a bit of footage in the first episode of the um, EasyJet um, Inside the Cockpit, first episode on the Monday. And the ITN contacted me to use some of my footage that I filmed at Newcastle Airport during Storm Doris. So they contacted me, said, can we use um, one of the snippets that you got of an EasyJet A320 that had diverted from Manchester and was landing in a crosswind here at Newcastle. So I said, yeah, no problem. Signed off on it. Um, uh, under that, I got credits at the very end if you play it back you'll see I'm in the credits at the end of that ITV one um, and you it shows what a cheap program it was how badly edited it was and there was no forethought there was n there was n there was nothing put into it to make it accurate factual anything you know one minute the show in a <laughs> the show in a EasyJet pilot depart in Manchester, runway 23 right. The next minute they're showing the outside shot of an EasyJet A319 rotating off runway 26 left at uh, Gatwick. It was nonsensical. It was absolutely rubbish. And then they, sh they um, gave some illustrations of crosswind landings, right? And included in that compilation of clips, there was one from Amsterdam, one from somewhere else, and my shot from Newcastle, they labelled my shot from Newcastle as London Luton Airport. It was absolutely ridiculous. And um, I, I, I sent them a complaint like, and it's, it, to me it just showed how poor the programme was. They couldn't even, you know, we <laughs> I've always believed we don't exist up here in the north, but the fact they couldn't even bring themselves to label the proper airport you know just showed me how how uh, bad it was but I didn't enjoy it I found I found the first episode cringeworthy as well it was just no I didn't like it that's my rant about it over and I say that I haven't contributed something to it I thought because I, I had some footage in the channel 4 documentary two years ago on the Vulcan XH558 and I thought it was going to be a similar style program to that. You know, and obviously not historical, but you know, interesting. 
and the XH558 that they did with Guy Martin. Um, that was a great program. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, but this ITV one was just... It just makes you laugh. It honestly does. These people are being paid to make up nonsense like they do. And it, they can't even put a program like that together. It's crazy. Right, anyway. That's my morning done. ATC has contacted me, so I shall contact him. I shall speak to you all very shortly. Ryanair 85, Lima Mike, descend altitude 3000 feet, Cork QNH 1017. Yeah, 3000 feet, QNH 1017, Ryanair 85, Lima Mike. Cork approach, good evening, Ryanair 62, X ray Golf information, November, Vapal 1 Golf, passing uh, flight level 130. Ryanair 62 X-ray Golf, Cork, good evening, confirm your squawk 6516. Very firm, 6516 in the box, Ryanair 62 X-ray Golf. Ryanair 62 X-ray Golf, Cork, thanks for having you identified down the squawk. Continuing down, back on, clear, back on, one golf arrival, runway 35. Descend now, 5000 feet, QNH 1017. Okay, continue on the vehicle, one golf arrival, expect ILS 3510, 5017, 62 X-ray Golf. And my energy search I got for spacing, the energy seems to be back 250 on Australis. Okay, back to 250 on this, runner 62, extra golf. Not uh, 725 Yankee speed, not above 250 on Australis. Other speed, not above 250 on Australis, not 725 Yankee speed. Ryanair 850 Mike, yeah, you're going to be number one for your ILS speed, not below 250 knots until Rob Paul. For spacing. Speed not below 250 until Rob Paul. Uh, Ryanair 85 Lima Mike. Not the 725 Yankee, descend 5000 feet, Cork in H1017. Down to 5,000 feet, up at 725 Yankee and 1017 for the QNH. Ryanair 62 X-ray, go continue, descend 3,000 feet, QNH 117 to be level at half time. Uh, down to 3,000 feet, uh, 1017 level by Atlam, Ryanair 62 X-ray, go
160 vector golf, turn left turning 200 vectors for space and continue to send 3000 to be vectors now for the phone and uh, port course. Okay, that's copied uh, left turning 200 vectors for the ALS. Uh, 160 vector golf, if I'm going number two for your ALS, and uh, number one is off your two o'clock, five miles, uh, level 3000. Runner 85, Lima Mike, thanks for the speed, and uh, speed is yours now. No speed restriction, Runner 85, Lima Mike. Runner 85, Lima Mike, Tismo 1 Golf, cleared out, let's approach from the 170 or number 1 report established. Number 1, reverse when established, Runner 85, Lima Mike. Uh, Cork, Pros, can you just confirm the ILS is 109.15? Uh, if I'm 10915. 10915, right now, if I blame my mic, thank you. And if I blame my mic, the event course 345. And of course, three four five right now. Three five in the mic. Thank you. Runner 60, Retro Golf, turn right now, heading 260, base leg. Right heading 260, right now, 62, Uh, 725 Yankee, descend 3000 feet, turn H1017. 3000 feet, Papa, 725 Yankee. Runner 6, 2, Hitchery Golf, turn right, heading 310, from that heading intercept localizer, clear dial, that's 35, number 2, report established. Turn 0 degrees, and sub localizer, clear dial, that's 35, number 2, Runner 6, 2, actually. Papa, 7, 2, 5, Yankee, when you can, bring energy 6, speed back to 180 knots. Reduce speed 180 knots, up 7, 2, 5, Yankee. Cork approach right now, F5 Lima Mike, fully established. Right now, F5 Lima Mike, here's land 35, surface wind checks 340 degrees, 16 knots. Compared to land 35, right now, F5 Lima Mike.
Alpha 735 Yankee, Tismo 1, Golf, clear to ILS approach, Romeo 35, number 3, report to Roger, clear to do one golf, uh, that's 3-5, uh, we'll report when established, up 75 Yankee. Right now, 6-2, extra golf, fully established, uh, runway 3-5. Roger, 6 zero three golf, continue your approach, traffic to land, surface wind, 3 4 0 one 6 Continue, right now, 6 two. Runner 85 Ingham Mike, on the ground time 3 1, pay case right on Charlie Parking Stand 7. Pay yeah. case via Charlie Parking Stand 7, right now 85 Lima Mike. Uh, Cork approach, can we take 88? Uh, Lima Mike, A firm, stand 8, no problem. Stand 8, thank you. Approach, um, this is Pop 75 Yankee, uh, we were uh, frequency and course in, but we don't seem to be picking up the ILS for some reason. Would it be okay for you vectors if that's possible, Pop 75 Yankee? Uh, seven two five Yankee, what's the frequency you have? Uh, I have 109.15 from the charts, Pop 75 Yankee, could be wrong though. Runner 62, X ray golf, turn on 35, surface wind 34016. Clear on 35, Runner 62, X ray golf. Uh, 725 Yankee, try 1089, 108 decimal 90. Roger, we'll try 108 decimal 90, cost 725 Yankee. Pop 75 Yankee, uh, no wish, we still don't seem to be uh, getting anything. Uh, okay, 725 Yankee, turn right heading 355. Right heading 355, Pop 75 Yankee. Uh, Pop 725 Yankee, the cow base of Cork broken 400 feet, broken 600 feet, broken 2000 feet. Papa 725 Yankee, try 10990, 10990. 10990, Papa 725 Yankee, we'll try that. Runner 62 actually, now we're on the ground, time 3 5, right on Charlie, and uh, park to the right of your company, parking stand 8. Yeah. Okay, right 5, Charlie and stand out, right at 62, extra little thanks. And Pop 75 Yankee, yeah, we are uh, established on the island. Pop 75 Yankee. Pop 75 Yankee, you're clear to have now 35 surface wind check, 340 degrees, 160. Clear to land, Pop 75 Yankee, you're on your 35. I'll try now 85 Lima, my guard stand 8, could you close our flight plan please? 
Well, folks, that's us on uh, the ground at uh, Cork. So uh, that's us done flying for uh, for today. So that's us uh, all done and dusted as I say and uh, done a couple of live streams today and uh, hope you all enjoyed it. Thanks to everyone for watching. A well used runway. Nah it's just basically Michael if I'd taken the right onto the other runway because you can go right then left onto the taxiway it just uses up more space. Whereas if you can take if you can just keep it rolling along the runway take the right at the end you're straight onto the apron straight on the stand so you you use up less fuel because you're having to use less power to go and do two 90 degree turns so instead you're just doing one 90 degree turn um but keeping the speed so yep anyway folks that's us all done join us in the next stream whenever that will be as i say it's two weeks since the last one and uh don't know when the next one will be but take care everyone have a very good week and we shall see you next time so see you later on everyone bye bye